It's great to have your company for the weekly this Friday, the 13th day of August. My name is Jessica Amir, a senior market analyst with Bell Direct. Well, the local share market smashed records this week, rising above the key milestone of 7,600 points for the first time in history. And despite fears of an economic slowdown, as lockdowns have been extended through much of Australia, the local share market looks to be on track to post 11 months of gains. So far this August, the market is up 3.1%, supported by buying in tech stocks and financials. Across the trading week, though, so far Monday to Thursday, the market is up a modest 0.7%. Looking at the key themes emerging, financials and telcos are stealing the show. The most buying was in financial stocks, lifting the finance sector 3%. What made global headlines, though, was that the biggest company in Australia, Combank, CBA, reported their full-year profit jumped 19% to $8.8 billion, that beat expectations. And the company also declared an upcoming dividend of $2 per share, plus a $6 billion share buyback. For more on CBA, check out Bell Direct's reporting season coverage. The other key theme was that telcos dialed up lifting the sector over 2%. Now, Telstra was a standout in the sector. TLS shares jumped over 5% to a four-year high after announcing they're on track to grow their earnings next year for the first time since 2017. Looking at the best performers now in the ASX 200, the other key themes that emerged was that lithium stocks kept rising to the top and agricultural stocks delivered the goods. Among lithium stocks, we can see Orocobre, ORE, they rose 17%. Why? Well, Galaxy, GXY, their shareholders voted on their merger going ahead. Now, if the court approves the merger, GXY shares will stop trading on the 16th of August, and the new combined entity's shares will commence trading on the 26th of August. The other lithium major company, Pilbara Minerals, PLS, they jumped 14% to a record high of $2.38, despite no announcements from the company. As for agricultural stocks, Graincorp, GNC, their shares jumped 14% after upgrading their earnings and profit expectations, supported by rebounding demand and higher wheat prices. As for the best performers in the all odds, the biggest 500 stocks, the same themes played out too. We saw battery and lithium stocks rising. The lithium battery company, Novonix NVX, their shares were a standout up over 36% after a Fortune 500 company bought a 16% stake in Novonix. And in the ag space, salmon grower Hue and Aquaculture, Hue or HUO, pardon me, their shares rose over 30% as well after Andrew Twiggy Forrest increased his stake in HUO to about 19% just days after Huon received a takeover offer from a Brazilian meat processing company called JBS. If you pivot though to the lithium sector, it's really important to know the lithium sector received three huge votes of confidence this week. Why? Well, firstly, the US Senate passed the $1 trillion infrastructure bill with some of those funds being put towards building a US electric vehicle charging grid and charging stations throughout America. Secondly, JP Morgan came out supporting the lithium sector saying to buy everything in the sector, in the lithium space. Why? Well, JP Morgan believes there will be a 19% a year increase in demand for lithium over the next 10 years. That's based on demand for electric vehicles and batteries. Now, this also means that supply will struggle to keep up. As such, JP Morgan sees a supply deficit beyond 2030. And the analysts also put buy calls on lithium stocks IGO, ORE, MIN and PLS. Now, thirdly, one of the biggest electronics manufacturers um, in the world, Foxconn, who makes products for Apple and other large tech companies, well, they announced that they're moving into making electric vehicles. Now, the chairman of Foxconn says its new electric vehicle business should grow significantly next year, and they'll start mass producing EVs in the US in 2023. So this means demand for lithium will scale up again. And also keep in mind that Foxconn is one of the world's most successful product manufacturers.
Um, and now they'll be going into EVs with the hope of rivaling Tesla and BMW's car production. So keep that in mind. Moving to what to watch next week, there's two considerations. Well, firstly, reporting season. Uh, those numbers continuing to come in and so far 80% of companies have reported better than expected results or met estimates. Remember, the overall market is expecting to see earnings growth of 26% for the 2021 financial year and this supports share price growth. But what's really key is that you want to be backing companies that are meeting or beating estimates. Why? Well, based on data collected over the past 11 reporting seasons, if a company met or beat expectations, their shares performed strongly over the coming period, rising over the next four months, for instance. On the flip side, if a company didn't report what was expected, the company's shares generally fell about 6% over the next four months. So with that in mind, what are the companies who have met or beat expectations? Well, they include CBA, Suncorp, IAG, Janice Henderson, James Hardy, Nick Scarley, Rio Tinto and Temple and Webster. As for companies who have delivered sour grapes, they include News Corp, NWS, REA Group, REA and Elmo Software, ELO. And as for companies reporting next week, look out for JB Hi-Fi, BHP, Breville, BRG as well. Remember the key is to watch if the numbers that come out are uh, better or worse than expected and that's when you'll likely see a share price move. Check out Bell Potter's reporting season calendar which has consensus or market expectations on it and stay tuned to Bell Direct next week um, as we'll continue to cover reporting season numbers that you need to be across. Lastly as for economic news to watch next week there's a lot of data coming out uh, but the all important employment data is out for July on Thursday. Amid increased lockdowns we're expecting unemployment to worsen in July and also August but for July remember um, the market moves as in the ASX 200 broad move, uh, its broad move of the day or its reaction to employment is generally based on either beating um, or uh, coming in under market expectations. So closer to the date, we'll share what the expectations are so you can stay informed. And that's the weekly. Please leave your questions or feedback in the comments section on YouTube. It's great to see you. From all of us here at Bell Direct, have a happy and safe weekend. I'm Jessica Ramirez. Bye for now.